This week on Executive Class, it's a first of a two-part series on Switzerland. As you might know, we've been to this alpine wonderland more than any other in Europe for our program. They're mostly to cover Swiss products or to visit a watch factory. This time, however, we're coming as travelers. So even if we've covered many Swiss cities over the past years, we're back to rediscover them with a fresh pair of eyes and ears. So join us, I'm David Saldran. This is Executive Class in Switzerland. Any trip to Switzerland from our part of the world begins with this breathtaking aerial scene. The majestic Swiss Alps from above 30,000 feet. The Alps are more than just a breathtaking backdrop to this landlocked country. As you'll find out, the mountains, lakes, waterways, and climate that spring from the Alps have defined the Swiss for centuries. Their culture, economy, and politics, even their legendary neutrality. Our trip across Switzerland starts in Zurich, the main gateway that is often mistaken as the capital of the country. And not surprisingly, Zurich after all is the largest and richest city in Switzerland, and in terms of per capita income, the wealthiest city in the world. Zurich is among my favorite cities, especially because it's one of the most livable cities there is. Everything works like clockwork, Swiss clockwork. Of course, Zurich isn't perfect, as you can tell from the late winter weather, which is too bad because the city is best when explored on foot. But there are other ways to see the city without getting wet or freezing in the cold. From the famous Brasserie Lip, take the lift to the 11th floor, to the Jules Verne Panorama Bar, listed as one of the world's best bars, for their cocktails of course, but primarily for this. Sweeping 360 degree views of the city. A window seat at this observation tower is simply the best way to orient yourself with Zurich, as almost every major landmark is visible from here, including the part of the lake named after the city. Zurich is also a global hub with a diverse population that enriches the local culture. Ah, thank you. Muchas gracias. <laughs> thank you so much. What a great combination. A really good, refreshing cocktail like this one and a marvelous view like that one. You know, there are many other elevated points in Zurich where you can catch sweeping views of the city. Take the Grossmünster, for example. You see the building over there in the distance with the Twin Towers. I've been there before, but I've had to climb more than 100 steps just to get to the top. As for the Jules Verne, well, I can't think of a more comfortable, a more elegant, and more romantic spot to be in. Now this is how you enjoy Zurich. The Swiss, however, love the outdoors, no matter the weather. So a bit of cold rain shouldn't stop you from exploring the Altstadt, the medieval old town center. One of my favorite spots is Lindenhof park on a hill where Roman settlement was discovered. Here you get closer views of the old townscape and the city's landmarks on both sides of Zurich's Limmat River, including the main cathedral, the towering Gorsmünster. The old town is compact enough to cover entirely on foot, plus the cobblestone streetscape is so lovely you'll hardly notice the weather or feel tired at all. So make your way to the edge of Lake Zurich, where on summer days, the whole city comes here to play. I've stood here before and could see the Alps from this spot on the lake, but not on this misty day. But imagine the view when the clouds do break. And even if not, the serene mood takes my breath away. During summer, people swim in the lake and the Limat River but only swans and ducks there too in the winter. Still, few things can take the Swiss away from their water, 
just as he's determined rowers. Alas, even the Swiss are human and find ways to stay warm indoors. Naturally, with Swiss chocolate. Oh yes, cozying up with Swiss chocolate. That alone is worth visiting Zurich in the winter. I'm partial to Sprungli, which along with Teuser, are two of my favorite Zurich chocolate makers. The Sprungli Confiserie on Paradeplatz off Bahnhofstrasse, Zurich's upscale shopping street, has been around since 1859. The cafe and shop has been remodeled many times, but all the chocolates and pastries are still handmade, just as they were 160 years ago. If the name Sprungli rings a bell, a cowbell, that's because the founder, Rudolf Sprungli, split his business between the artisanal confectionery, now known as Sprungli Confiserie, and the chocolate producers Lint and Sprungli, the company behind the mass production chocolate brand Lint. The two are now entirely separate, and you can tell the difference in the taste. I know this looks like a lot for just one person, but it's just a sampling of the best Sprungli has to offer. Some of these are really, really popular, like the Luxembourgli, just like little macarons, but very different. Then, of course, the truffe du jour, or truffles of the day, made on the spot, on the same day. And, of course, their famous hot chocolate. And, of course, their cakes. Unlike mass market chocolates, Sprungli's are all handcrafted, most on the same day, and with locally sourced ingredients when possible like Swiss cow's milk, sugar, wheat, and free-range eggs. Believe me, you can taste the difference. The rest that's imported are from the best farms around the world. Now let's try the Luxembourgli, the flavor of the month. Eggnog. Now they may look like macarons, like mini macarons, but they're very different. Instead of a ganache filling, they have like this really nice creamy fillings inside. Luxembourgli gets its name for the pastry chef from Luxembourg that invented it 60 years ago. It's a Sprungli original and still their best-selling pastry. Now let's try more chocolate. The truffle of the day. This is larger than usual and this is dark chocolate on dark chocolate. Mmm, let's look at that hint. Look at that filling. Creamy chocolate washed down with hot cocoa. Ooh, you'll forget it's winter. I know it's a lot of chocolate, but how many times are you in Zurich, right? <laughs> the truffes du jour are truffles handmade on location and on the same day, so they're always fresh. Okay, don't judge me now, but this is my chocolate binge. I'm gonna try the chocolate cake. No wonder they call this cake Chocolate Dream. The dark chocolate cream cake with biscuit and maraschino is pure chocolate fantasy. As is any day at Confissory Sprungli, the cozy yet lively coffeehouse atmosphere is a perfectly happy ending to an otherwise gloomy afternoon in the city. Indeed, Switzerland, Zurich included, can often feel like a fairy tale where everything works and where everyone seems well off, well fed, and well generally content. But like any city, it has an underbelly. And here at Langstrasse, Zurich's red light district, I'm having dinner at an establishment that's been anti-establishment long before the term was invented. There's this image we have of Zurich of being a very square and conservative financial hub populated by bankers and millionaires. Well, that's only half the picture because this is the other half, indeed. There's a strong counter-cultural current in this city. And this restaurant, the vegetarian Hiltel restaurant in an edgy part of town is like, well, giving the finger to the establishment. Founded in Zurich in 1898, Hiltel is the longest operating vegetarian restaurant, not just in Switzerland, but the whole world. 90 years ago, being a vegetarian was considered strange, un-Swiss even. But Hiltel proved early on that healthy food could also be tasty. 
financed with their newest branch in Grungy Langstrasse, they've shown that vegetarian could be cool and hip as well. Wow, you know, I was like looking for a restaurant and I started walking through the streets in this neighborhood. There's police station, there were like sex shops, yeah. there were like ethnic restaurants. People didn't look like they were from Switzerland. I mean, what is this place and why do you choose this place for your restaurant? It's like, it's like London, if you, you had a, so like a, a small quarter, like Soho or something like that. So it's, a, it's this circle from Zurich, <laughs> it's in, in changing. Yeah. Uh, a couple of years before, we got some health angels here to take over the no whole. No way! Yeah? yeah. The whole, the whole circle, and now it's changing. So they get, they build some new flats, new stores, and they want to, um, yeah, to grade up. So it's an up and coming neighborhood. Yes. But um, it's an, but there's still that edgy feel here, right? Yes, of course. It's it's a it's a place it's a place that lives at the most here in Zurich. That's that's really funny to see. So you get everything, you get drug dealers or uh, prostitution and all that stuff, but they take care of each other. Each other, yeah, and take care of us as well. No, Hiltel is at the souped up soup kitchen, although they organize free meals for the community. No, this is currently the it address for Zurich's creative crowd, which after a late dinner here, hit the club at the basement. Indeed, you need to constantly remind yourself that you're in Zurich, as even the price of a meal is relatively cheap, starting at four and a half Swiss francs, or about five dollars a plate for the sprawling vegetarian buffet. You pay extra for their handcrafted beers, juices, cocktails, and vegetarian desserts, but still all below the average in pricey Zurich. It's hard to believe that Hiltel is not just the oldest vegetarian restaurant in Zurich or in Switzerland, but in the entire planet. And the great thing about this place is there's nothing old-fashioned or conservative about it. In fact, everything from the menu to the way you eat to the way you pay for the food is also innovative. That's what I love most about Zurich. The Swiss city known for the highest levels of wealth, security and efficiency proves it can be creative and spontaneous simultaneously. When our Swiss holiday continues, we'll show you two easy side trips from Zurich. We'll head to postcard perfect Lucerne and to the historic city of Basel along the Rhine. The first part of our swing around Switzerland continues after the break. <laughs> 